this this is we're getting to the point of something that's unheard of it's only four o'clock and I'm already headed to the gym immaculate time management so plan for today's lift chest that's most of it that's most of it right there but there may be more there may be more than just chest uh, potentially a touch of calves potentially a touch of forearms but that's to be determined that's post lift you know that's after the real workout chest uh, but in terms of pressing you know I'm not really sure what I want to end up doing today because I mean I'm a so here's my thought processes when I think of a heavy pressing set for chest you know something like an incline dumbbell incline barbell kind of free weights where I'm, I can really load up a lot of weight that appeals to me and you know thinking of it in a way of like you know I want to put a serious amount of tension into my given muscle so that it gets worked in like a well I mean kind of a strength sort of way you know to main, maintain sort of a sort of a certain strength level as I diet down right I'm thinking about that but my muscular endurance now that I'm dieting is a bit lower like I hit failure quicker with the same weight even though I can still do it for like the same few uh, or like the same number of reps in the beginning you know let's say I could do the 150 pound dumbbells for like 18 really good reps I'm not talking like bounce I mean like 18 good reps and now I might be a little bit closer to like 10 even though the first three reps might feel the same like it might feel just as light on rep three bolts versus cut but once I get past that it's almost like here's my bulk strength level you know it's kind of a smooth transition downward to failure and then dieting it's like maybe similar to the beginning then more of a fucking crash so that makes me want to maybe bias a little bit more machines right? like the Arsenal machine press that's over there today as my starting movement so that I won't have to rely so much on my stabilizers and really just wreck wreck my chest to completion and not have to worry about the balancing act of not dropping a 150 pound dumbbell right to the dome so to be determined but that's what I'm thinking you know I think well, I mean we're, we're gonna find out in three minutes but that's kind of the downside of free weights Maybe I wouldn't call it a downside, but there is a slightly unspoken benefit of using machines, and that's the fact that the movement path is already laid out for you. You know, when you do a set of uh, Smith machine squats, for example, you don't have to worry about your balance much. You know, you gotta you gotta keep a tight core, stay braced, of course, but you're not really you're not going to lose your balance and fall over. You know, you're not going to lean side to side. That bar is going up and down in that same path no matter what. And with machines, you know, like a dip machine or a preacher curl machine, the leg extensions. <sighs> machine press. It's the same thing. You don't have to worry about your stabilizers. So failure becomes a bit more ambiguous, you know. With machines, I mean, because with a straight-up bench press or a dumbbell curl, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to a rep where it's not coming back up, guaranteed. Same, I mean, squats especially. You know when you're about to fail squats, or when you're at that limit where if you go for another rep, it's gonna be a gamble. But with machines, the fact that you can kind of take the let's just say take the attention away from doing the exercise and like all the technique that goes along with it like when you're squatting you know you gotta be real your, your brain's firing in a few different ways strength wise technique wise balance wise you know your breathing's gotta be extra careful you know you gotta breathe in tune with your reps but like when I go on this machine press I don't have to worry about picking up the dumbbells I don't have to worry about throwing them up maybe lose my balance I can just sit there get under it 
and you get started. So that's making me think I might want to start with machine press today. <sighs> but don't, um, even though I made like a whole little two second chat about that, don't take that as though you have to have such a fucking inner monologue before every workout. Like, oh, should I do the leg extension first? Or the calf raise machine first? Huh, yeah. You know, as long as you go hard, whatever you do that feels good, you're gonna like. And then, as long as you're highly fatigued and highly pumped, then I think you're asking for success. Or, or I just combine asking for trouble. No, no, you're setting yourself up for success. There we go. I'll, uh, there will be some food at the end of this video too. I think I, I'm gonna start making that a little bit more of a staple, just so it's not always car, gym, pose, car, zilch. So, nothing else to say. Let's just get straight into it. Whatever that first working set ends up being. And I'm sure I'll explain my reasoning why as well. Machine press it is. I was actually going to do dumbbell, but the bench that I like over there is taken. And this gym, the benches are all like screwed to the ground so they don't wobble. Which is good when you're doing it set on a bench, but if you want to move them around, it's kind of a give and take. But let's just get hyped up. Four plates feels fucking heavy. And then go from here. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Let's drop the weight. Do one more set with three plates, and then we can move on to a little bit. So drop set. Oh my god. Let's move on. Oh my goodness. That was a good three sets, god damn it. Oh my god. 
I was really trying to retract my shoulders on that one. But let's go to the pec deck. Probably two, three sets. Close down. I mean, stack with a plate, but halfway up, pause, then finish. You know, do maybe eight or 10 of those until I can't really finish the rep. And then I'll finish a little nasty. You know, kind of a, kind of a mullet style approach. You know, business in the front, first half of the set, nice and controlled, party in the back. You know, kind of getting nasty with it towards the end. One more like that, then I think I lose the plate. One more, and I think that's about right. Okay. Okay. That's enough. That was a very good chest day. And you know what else it was? It was a very, a very dense chest day to the point where actually, you know what? I do think that that fourth set of machine press, you know, cause I did the two with the plate loaded arsenal machine and then I did the one like life fitness set. I think that that life fitness one, I didn't even really need to do that one. I just kind of did it because it seemed like a matter of course. Like, oh, add one, add one more set of pressing. You know, don't just do three. Add, do one more, just because it, you know, kind of felt right in an arbitrary way. But after those three sets of machine or the arsenal press, I thought I was, I thought I was good. You know, I thought that was pretty much it. Just because, I think my chest was wrecked. I was pushing it as hard as I could. Uh, my only. It's, it, this is kind of a neat, like, this isn't a generalized tip, I'm just kind of saying what it felt like. But as I was doing that set, the neutral grip, it's good, I like it, but I, I wish it were a little more pronated. Yeah, I wish it was a little more pronated, like my hands were a little more in line this way. So instead of them being parallel, I would have loved like a 45. 45 degree angle I think would be nice. Because uh, something about having your hands too parallel like this, it kind of makes me want to like slip my grip, like push, 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 and like I can feel my hands turning inward. And the last thing I want to do is drop that little thing on me. Not that it would actually land on my chest or anything, but you, know, you don't want to have any abrupt, I'm fucking with like a little filter that lets in, uh, you, you don't want any abrupt movements in the gym, machine wise, of course. So plan now is to go home. Cook something, chill, do some homework, and then repeat the process. You know, not too insane of a day. Uh, but I am, I do feel good that the workout is over. Not in a, like, oh, I can't believe, oh, I'm finally done, I'm finally done working out. Not in that kind of way. But, you know, it's like I've got the rest of the day to kind of chill. You know, it's, uh, it's 6.08 now. 
this gym's kind of far away. I wasn't in there for two hours. That workout itself only took, like, fucking, I mean, what, maybe, I mean, maybe we're talking, like, 45 minutes-ish, and even that's kind of a maybe, you know, so, a little bit of a combination of the drive, pre-workout yapping, post-workout yapping, and then, you know, pose down and everything else. When it comes to chest, when it comes to any muscle group, fuck man. Lift some heavy sets, do some good reps, squeeze hard, get a pump, you're golden. You know, what else is there? It's like, as much as I like and I do put energy and thought into, like, okay, what kind of sets should I do? Or, like, what sort of, what kind of drop sets should I try to focus on? You know, apart from. Well, apart from what I would kind of consider the basics of a of a body parts workout, which are kind of similar across the board for anybody to do, you know, like I think everybody, if they're going to, if they want to build a big chest, they're going to implement some kind of heavy pressing. And more than likely, some lighter fly-based movements. You know, these are kind of basic fully encompassing approaches but when it comes to the more niche details of like okay so should I do tempo reps should I do straight reps should I hold in, should I hold the squeeze and like do a two second eccentric or can I go up and down at the same pace when it comes to things like that I don't think that's so important uh, I think it is just to change it up you know if you do the same workout over and over again for one thing, you're probably going to get a little bit less stimulated by it. <sighs> you know, because you kind of need... The whole point of your body's adaptation for muscle growth is you're exposed to something so intense that your body has to adapt to you know, be able to counteract it in the future. Right? That's, that's like the main premise of any kind of training, but strength, muscle building training as well. So... If you don't change it up every now and again, or maybe not even, that's not even the right way to say it. If you don't change it up on a reasonably consistent bi bias, a reasonably consistent basis, then your stimulus is going to get stale. You know, it's not like my mind, or it, it's not like your bicep is thinking conscious thoughts and it's saying, like, oh, you know, quoting, a, to quote a certain someone we all know, oh, I already know you're going to do some carols. That's a, that's a terrible Arnold impression. Don't we gonna we'll remove that in post? But uh, but you know it's like I already know you're gonna do bench. I already it's not like I think that you can really shock the muscle in that sort of way. But I mean, would it not make sense? You know, if you're trying to get to the fucking if you're trying to cut down a tree, you don't chop right in the exact same spot every time. That's not how it works. You know, you got to chip away at it by hitting it from different angles kind of making use of the synergy between those different approaches. Um, what the hell? I had a point, but I forgot. I kept... I was thinking about a fucking oral impression. What the hell was I about to say? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, not only will it actually just be a staler approach to training, and it probably won't be so fucking stimulating, but you're also just going to get kind of fucking bored of it, you know? Like, even though for the last however many hundred or... No, I'm in the thousands now of days of coming into the gym, doing a workout, and then going home. Even though, you know, in its basic approach, it's just repeating the same thing over day, every day, over and over and over, uh, it's really not, you know? Because every day is different. Every day I feel different. Every day I do different things. Uh, every day is a different fucking body part, you know? So, if you change up your workouts a little bit, not only are you just going to become a more well-rounded lifter and individual, but you're probably going to have a better time doing it, and your training stimulus is going to be a little bit wider, and when it comes to the working out muscle growth, uh, you know, thought machine that everyone is now a part of, wider is typically better, you know, because some people get insane results doing very different styles of training. You know, I'm talking German volume training, 10 sets of 10 of heavy compound movements, 
uh, to, I mean, you know, if you're getting really hyper specific, I'm talking way of the giant pumpkin, Mr. Uh, employed by a certain arm wrestler known as Mr. Devin, Mr. Devin Larratt. You know, people get fucking muscle, muscular growth in a bazillion different fucking ways. So, it would make sense that you know, the stimulus or the activity that you can do to result in muscle growth is pretty wide. So instead of putting all your eggs in one basket, you know, maybe one day come in and try to focus on really heavy sets, you know, a lot of compounds, a lot of just mechanical load and tension. Whereas, you know, the other, let's say you come back in for a chest day the next day and you can tell you're a little bit more fatigued, then you can kind of say, okay, maybe I'll try to make this a squeezing, you know, lighter weight kind of day that isn't so, you know, physically damaging, but, you know, I'm kind of emphasizing the, uh, you know, fighting the burn. But in either case, go to the gym, go hard, get fatigued, get pumped, go home, grow, repeat. It's a seven step process and you can have a little bit of fun with it, you know? So that's, uh, that's enough of my little post chess day chit chat right there. So plan now, let's, uh, let's go eat something. Let's cut to the desk. See what kind of meal I can scramble up. All right, it is now technically the next day, but it's whatever. Still dining down. So chest, yeah, I can still feel it. Just a quick, so before I get into the actual food, I, I see this question far too often. And it's like, what frequency should I be doing? Or I see somebody comment, they're talking about like, well, I, you know, I've been doing full body workouts for a while. They work pretty well. You know, I just do full body every day. That's silly. And if, I think in a muscle building context, that's definitely not the right approach, right? So every muscle, every day, that's, let's say that's here. This is fucking, this is not awesome. And then bro split encouragers, one muscle once a week, you know, that would just be a chest day, a back day an arm day, a leg day, a shoulder day, and then I guess two days of rest. That's their whole week. Uh, I think you're kind of missing out a little bit there too, you know? It's not a week-long process to recover. You know, after this last chest day, it's not going to take me a week before I can do chest again. But today, the day after, yeah, I'm a little bit sore. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to be feeling it a little bit. So if I had to give you a general rule of thumb... You shouldn't hit anything too much more frequently than... So, I think every three days, right? If I did chest, two other lifts, I think I could do chest again. I always wait for the fifth day, though. Because for me, I do legs, chest, back. Legs, chest, back. Arms, and then legs again, you know? So there's a three-day gap in between. But... It would just make sense. And if you want to boil that down to a much simpler fucking approach, if something's sore, then don't work it. You know, if it, but if it feels good, even if it's after just two days, then yeah, maybe you're fucking fine. So pre-workout meal for tomorrow's back day, three fucking just fully loaded turkey sandwiches, right? I'm talking mustard, mayonnaise, lettuce, turkey, bread. Not what I would call... What a conventionally diet friendly meal, but you got to remember these ingredients, these ingredients are special. They're picked out special to match my diet specifically, right? What do you think? I'm going to grab the regular ass mustard or no, no, mustard has no fucking calories. You think I'm just going to grab the regular ass mayonnaise off the shelf? Come on, let's be fucking real, right? Go up a few aisles, you know, broaden your horizons, light mayonnaise, fucking perfect. Drops the calorie count by like three, four times each. So the basic setup, four keto buns, you know, one gram of fat each, three grams of carbs each. That's like nothing. That's like five grams. Well, that's about 20 calories of carbs and fats, which may as well only be five grams of carbs, plus 50 grams of protein worth of just the deli turkey, which arguably, you know, could be, uh, could be debated, the quality of that protein. I think it's on the higher end of average. I mean, I've gotten 
reasonable results eating it on a semi-consistent basis. Then mustard, mayonnaise. One thing I will say though, and this is kind of a general tip for anybody dieting and you're really trying to track your shit, is you got to make sure that you weigh out fucking everything, you know? So if you're going to have a whole little container of the turkey, you don't have to weigh it. You can just look at how many servings are in and do the math there, plug it into your phone, track it. But let's say you've got the mayonnaise and it's like, oh, one serving, three and a half grams of fat in one tablespoon. You're seriously going to sit here and do a, fill up a tablespoon, scoop, fill it up again. And then how do you know you're even doing it right? You know, I think approaching food measurements by volume is kind of arbitrary. It's kind of a hassle. Shit's going to get stuck in the, th just don't deal with it. Instead, food scale, plate, sandwich in construction, you zero out the scale. And then as you add your fucking condiment, or at least whatever you're trying to track, you know, calorie wise, then that number, you know, the amount of grams of shit that you just put on the scale, that's what you can use. You know, I've seen, um, uh, same thing with peanut butter. You know, if you're about to scoop out a scoop or two of peanut butter for a sandwich, do not try to like, cause it, <laughs> there's no chance you're going to actually scoop out 16 grams. Like it says, like if that's a tablespoon, I, I almost kind of want to challenge you, right? S try to scoop out what you think is one serving of peanut butter. And then weigh how much you actually pulled out. I'm sure it's going to be way fucking more. And if you're not tracking these little fucking details, these uh, kind of the cracks and the crevices where calories hide, then shit's going to fucking add up. And you're going to have a way harder time staying in a deficit. Almost a fucking impossible time. Which is why I make sure to fucking basically track all my shit. But plan now is eat this, chill, do some homework, and then back for... You can come back for back tomorrow, which I've got later, but I will see you then.